There's one problem in our homework assignment for module 7.3 uh, that's a little bit different than the others. In this case, it's a little bit different because rather than just being given summary information, we're given the actual data, the actual results of the survey. So this is a good type of question to see because this table identifying each responder as male or female, their response, yes or no, this is how data initially looks when we conduct a proportion test or back when you're doing confidence intervals to estimate a proportion. This is what, what information we originally start off with. So what we can do is open this up in StatCrunch. And then we technically have two different ways to proceed. One would be to go through this list of data, find how many males responded, find how many females responded, how many males picked yes, how many males selected no. <clears throat> but that's going to be a very time-consuming process. So instead of doing that, what we're going to do is make use of some features in StatCrunch that we haven't taken a look at yet to split this data. So if we go to data, arrange, and then split, what we're going to do is break this data into two different lists. In this case, what we want to do is split up that response data. And what we want to do is split it by gender. So we're going to generate two columns, one which will have all of the male responses and one which will have all the female responses. So we get two new columns added to our data table. So we have all of our female responses collected, all the male responses, but we still have these broken up as yes and no. But again, it's a time consuming process to go through and count how many times did someone say yes or no. So what we can do is go into stat, proportion stats, two sample, and typically we select with summary, but for this problem we'll select with data. So what we can do is select either column to be our first, um, first variable, second variable. So in this case, I'll select female response and then male response. And what we have to do is identify what's a success. So in the context of this problem, a person saying yes is a success. A person saying yes is a success. So we need to just type in that word. StatCrunch is going to run through that list of data and determine what information um, determine how many yeses there are, how many noes there are, and conduct the test for us. The other piece of information we'll need to do is set up our hypothesis test, which if we flip back, let's see, taxes. so the claim is, is the proportion of male and females who are willing to pay higher taxes different from each other? So in this case, we would want an alternative hypothesis of not equal to. So we can click compute and we generate a series of results here. So one of those being the p-value for our test. But before that, we want information on the proportions of males and females who took the survey and are willing to pay higher taxes. So the first thing we're asked to report are just the actual sample proportions. So in this case, my first group was actually females. My second group was males. So to get the proportion of males, I need to find what is 27 divided by 97. So in this case, we want to round this to three decimal places. So this is going to be 0 0.278. For females, which is count one and total one, I need 34 divided by 103. Oops, let's clear that. I think it was keeping my previous number. So 34 divided by 103 is going to be 0 0.330. We're going to select the null hypothesis that they're equal, the alternative that they're not equal to each other. Determine our p-value, which is 0 0.427, which means we will not reject the null hypothesis meaning we want either option A or option D. Option D tells us there is not sufficient evidence to suggest the proportions of males and females who are willing to pay higher taxes to reduce the deficit differs. So in this case, that's what our answer is saying. And excellent, we got all those right. So again, this comes back to the idea of having the original data to work with. So what we did was selected data, arrange, and then split. 
so we can take that information, split it up into two different rows. In general, typically this information is reported as summary data, but again, somewhere along the line, someone had to start with all of this original data and then reduce it to that summary information or in this method feed this into the test so that we can get the results we're after.